To make the mini version of this DIY linear servo actuator, you're going to need an $8 off the shelf continuous rotation servo, along with the motor horns and mounting hardware that come with it. I'm using the Fitech FS90R from Adafruit. You'll need the correct set of 3D printed parts. Links to Thingiverse and my mini factory are in the video description. You're going to need some mounting hardware to mount the servo onto the 3D printed parts. In this case, it's two M2 by 10 screws and two M2 nuts. You're also going to need some two-part epoxy. I use JB Quick. It's available at most any hardware store. The parts needed to make the larger version are very similar. So full bills of materials and affiliate links for both size actuator are also in the video description. If you want to run the test Arduino code that I show later in the video, you're going to need an Arduino Uno and an Adafruit Motor Shield V2. Let's now take a look at how both sizes of the actuator are assembled. First, we're going to repurpose one of the horns that comes with the continuous rotation servo because FDM printing can't replicate the tiny teeth they use to grip the motor shaft. To do this, we're going to cut the arm off the horn and use only the hub. After you cut this arm off, make sure the hub fits into the printed pinion gear. Now we're going to use our two-part epoxy to bond the hub into the pinion gear. Now that we have the hub bonded into the pinion gear, we're going to attach this bonded assembly to the motor shaft using the thread forming screw that comes with the motor itself. Then we choose the desired length pusher arm and insert it into the motor bracket and make sure that it travels freely. Finally, we need to mount the servo to the motor bracket and we do that by bringing the screws up from the bottom with the nut on top. Also make sure that the teeth of the pinion gear are engaged with the teeth of the rack. And here we have the fully assembled mini version. Um, you can see that it's the teeth are correctly engaged because when I move the rack back and forth, you can hear the servo being moved. So a very similar process is used to assemble the larger version. Some of the main differences are the motor. We're using the Fitech FS5106R, and it's considerably larger motor. And we're going to use four M3 by 12 screws that go into four M3 nuts that hold it all in place. And we're going to use the circular servo horn that comes with the motor. And basically we're going to put that in place. We're going to use a thread forming screw to lock that down. And then we're going to bond the pinion gear with everything in place like this. So in other words, with everything like this, I'm going to put epoxy on right now. And then I'm going to put this on. I'm going to let it cure and then the assembly will be complete. As I mentioned earlier, to run these linear actuators, I'm using an Arduino Uno with an Adafruit Motor Shield V2 board. This is the general wiring setup that I have. First we have the USB connection, then we have motor power, which comes from my benchtop power supply, and then we have the servo plugging into one of the two ports on the Adafruit Shield. One gotcha that I did notice was that I needed to tie the positive lead from the motor power supply into the V-in port of the motor shield for the larger servo to work correctly. Let's take a look at this simple Arduino sketch I used to test out these actuators. I've included this sketch that I'm showing here with the STL files. This sketch is largely based on the Arduino sweep tutorial sketch. The important points are, for a continuous rotation servo, the commands still use angular values like a normal RC servo, but they mean something different. For example, if you want to get the servo spinning in one direction, you use the value of 180. If you want to get it spinning in the opposite direction, you use the value of zero. So these aren't moved to an angular position, these are just start the motor spinning in one direction or the other. To stop the servo, you use the value 90. Note that there is a potentiometer knob on each servo that allows you to tune the stop position if you find the servo is still moving after you issue the stop command. The best way to do this tuning is to comment everything else out in the void loop except for this one line, then run the sketch, and then adjust the potentiometer. The way you control the distance traveled by the actuator is all time-based. In other words, you have to first tell the actuator to start moving in one direction, use a time delay of some size, and then issue a stop command. So based on the size of the time delay, that will correspond to how far the actuator moves. So if you want to change the distance the actuator is moving, you just change this value right here. Okay, let's go ahead and run this sketch for the mini version. 
And now let's run it for the large version. So I've included a number of ways of mounting this bracket. So hopefully one of these will work for whatever project you have. Um, the dimensions of the hole spacings are included with the STL files. There are also different lengths in terms of um, the pusher. So that gives you some options in terms of stroke of the actuator. I recently used this actuator design in my mouse droid project. So if you want to see this design in action, just click here. That's it for this video. I hope you found these cheap DIY linear servo actuators useful. If you do, please be sure to subscribe and consider helping the channel grow by supporting me on Patreon. If you do use these in one of your own projects, be sure to share it with me on social media. Links to my Twitter and Instagram accounts are below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.